We are taking a trip, a vacation. In ancient times, wealthy Romans would travel for two years, vacationing throughout their massive empire. We are spending 10 days, eight vacation days, two travel days, away from work, friends, and day-to-day -day life, traveling the countryside, eating, drinking, cooking. This is the trip. Nine of us flew into Florence, got a train to Bologna, rented cars and drove to Montalcino, took day trips to Pienza, Montechiello, and Siena, drove back to Florence, and then flew home. These are the people on the trip. Betty, Claudia, Carol, Jim, Vince, my dad Don, and myself. We were led by Tom and Brad, owners of Food Glorious Food, a bakery in the Highland Park neighborhood of Pittsburgh. Tom and Brad take a trip to Italy nearly every year, bringing along a crew of interested travelers. The year is 2017. These are the tolls of the documentary, a Canon 5D camera, a short tripod, a Zoom H4 recorder, a lavalier microphone, and a narrator. This is The Vacation. The Vacation. Our party wakes to find itself in Florence, the capital city of Tuscany, a former central for medieval trade and the birthplace of the Renaissance. 383,000 city residents, 1.5 million in the greater metropolitan area. Cars and bicycles navigate narrow streets touching an estimated 13 million annual tourists, all taking the same photos of the Duomo, the Basilica, the David, and the replica David. The party of nine comes a touch, a newer restaurant founded by Matteo, Max, and Stefano. This trio of friends aims to keep alive the culinary tradition of Tuscany, but with a created touch. Together, they walk to the market. Carottieri, ancora, ma quanti sono questi carottieri? Oh, avete sbagliato oggi, non siete in arno, sono da quest'altra parte. Magliette gialle, guarda quanti ne vedo. Eh, esercito. Scusi, eh, da, da qua, da là. Non conosci loro, guarda. Chi sono? Questi qua sono con la maglietta, eh, beh, no, si sa, mi scrivo da lei. Le panche, le panche, l'abbiamo detto, non si preoccupi. Lui fa vedere Spartan, Spartan, la Spartan, per la corsa di Mostapoli. Tagliatelli with artichoke, fresh artichoke. Because sometimes when you show people, they say artichoke, but they don't even know. They looks like this from from the maybe from the land. But so another sauce is gonna be the marinara. So it's two sauces. Plus, I'm gonna do one uh, typical bruschetta with a fresh garlic. Since we get in a since we're fresh garlic, a little oil on the cutting board, and you mix the things together like this. No chance it's gonna go anywhere. It's gonna stay on the cutting board. Cut. Oh. Is this the same as Carol cutting down? No, these are the ones you hold it. You can use this. 
1700. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And he's still going with the water. Never stopped. It never stopped. This was working. The smell of uh, this smell this one. Pasta. We make fresh pasta, which is not this one. In uh, Emilia Romagna, for example, in Bologna, it depends which pasta they have to make. They make pasta with 80% of similar and 20% of white. Uh, here we do 50-50. Okay? Why? Because in our tradition, in our culture, the pasta the more white flour you use, more the pasta is uh, uh, is soft. The more similar you use, more the pasta is dry. What's the difference between the dry pasta and the fresh pasta? The fresh pasta in your palate should melt. You know, this is another example of how every area in Italy does things a little different. In Bologna, I was taught to use an eggshell of white wine that you added to that mixture. Uh, as, a, as a softening agent to the pasta. But what is really important to understand, everything we do now much left, huh? is being created no. a long time ago. Yeah. That's right, so you can see the cats. I love the idea of being able to introduce people to this culture, but I also like the idea of helping people through the experience of being here. It's helping people through a complicated experience, because it is so complicated. It is really true. Travel really does. It's a, Jim was talking this morning about the, the opposites of, of what this kind of travel does. It really forces you to deal with the opposites inside of you as well as the ones that are outside of you. I mean, um, the dark and the light, the good and the bad, the infamiliarity and the familiarity. I mean, it's just, uh, there are things about this place, this country that make me feel at home, and there are aspects of it that make me feel like I'm very, very far, far away. And how, you, I, how I and other people experience that is um, very individual. focused on what you want to do. Would I love to see the Valley of the Kings? I would. Will I ever see the Valley of the Kings? I won't. There's an eagerness on, on the part of, of people, I think, to spend their time judiciously, to spend it well. What am I going to learn from travel? Is it more important than if I started to study the laws of thermodynamics? You know, I mean, could probably learn a lot there too. I've always been creeped out by making memories. 
you know, I have not been good at that. I don't take a lot of pictures. I don't, I, you know, I used to keep journals. You know, I don't do that anymore. There's something artificially constructive about that kind of thing to me. My bet is that I'm in the vast minority there. Uh, I think people want to recall their nice times, and, and, and that's perfectly reasonable. I've taken a lot of pictures on this trip, but I think that I would not have things to achieve and to look back on. And I think that the world is so haphazard. I think it's very difficult to predict what is going to be of great value and what is not going to be. If you ask Tom and Brad why they travel to Italy, they'll tell you that it started in Bologna with a seemingly school. I think the beginning, kind of like the flame, that the spark that started it all was going to the simile school in Bologna. I learned to cook from these two little uh, uh, ladies, um, Marguerite and Valeria Simile. They are fraternal twins. Marguerite is Piccolo and Valeria is Grande, and they are brilliant, brilliant teachers. Serious, serious about their craft. Just being in the kitchen with them and watching them cook and cooking along with them and the, the techniques that they have, they're what we call hand slappers. You know what I mean? If you're doing something wrong, they're like, my dear, no, 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 you know, you're doing all wrong, so. No messing around. I had my hand slapped many times. The pasta has to be perfect. I am not perfectionistic. That's not me who I, who I am. So for me, the, the uh, rigor of the kind of discipline that requires to learn to make the pastas was <laughs> challenging for me at best. I, I want to do the damn stuff and keep moving and <laughs> not get uh, hung up on, is that thin enough or is that thick enough? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's okay, that's good. Um, but I love the making the ragus, and I love making the sauces, and I like um, the presentation, and I love to eat it. Oh my God, unbelievable. Is that like called in, in, uh, in France, the Lanterna Magica, huh. la, la, la Magic Lantern. Ah, that. Very funny. Uh, if I look this, that that's the story. Huh? I I can put at the window. Okay. So there's a phrase. Another stinging nettles. Yes, that's that. Yes. These are the it's a very light uh, first post, uh, with the uh, needles uh, and, uh, and cheese. 
nettles and cheese? Ricotta, with the ricotta cheese. Like the Joker. Please, sir. Please, please. After lunch at Giovanni's, the party joins their guide Cristina for a walking tour of the city and its food markets. I used to say that you can discover Italy uh, through what the Italian people cook. When the Italian people explain you a recipe, explain you a story, a story of a place, a story of the family, is a different kind of art. We used to speak all the time about food. We are so different from the south to the center to the north. We are a small country, but uh, totally different. And so food and uh, cook is something that is a part of us. So discover the market is a, is a way to discover the, the product and to decide and to see what we can cook every day. This means that we go also to the supermarket, okay? But if we have the possibility, we prefer to go to buy vegetables fresh in the market because they know where it came from. With elements dating back to 1000 before Christ, visiting Bologna is akin to time travel. Thousands of years collapse into the present. Stone is covered by brick, covered by concrete. War erased history, building by building, but the city rebounded through industry aiming the long nature of leftist leadership. Today, one still experiences a temporal dissonance upon seeing thousands of years condensed through architecture. Jim, he was talking about what visually this Italy does for him. It forces him to look at some building that's really, really old, and he may be on the inside and, and he'll think, was that done last month? Was that picture or painting or the wall color or the tile? Was that done last month or was it done last century? Or was it done five centuries ago and you don't know? And so that sort of not knowing and being surrounded by it is exciting, it's stirring, and I think for some people, it's a little disturbing. It's not the, f they need the familiarity in order to feel safe. I, have, I know someone who said, whenever I travel, I always go and I search in the city for an Econo Lodge because it always looks exactly the same. The same bread spreads, the same walls, the same bathroom, the same, everything is exactly the same. And I like that, she said. And I thought, and I feel exactly the opposite. <laughs> I don't want to see the same ugly bedspread <laughs> and the same ugly walls. I want to see something new. The party walks to Sir Jay's for their final meal in
In the morning, our party wakes up, eats breakfast and drives to the beautiful Montalcino. This is going to sound crazy, but sometimes I look for the repetitiveness. Because what it means to me in, internally is things are stable and they don't change. And sometimes when I look for the same thing and I see it changed a little bit or it's different, it also says things move on. Like this valley and this area that we're in. I've never been here in the spring. I've come for a couple trips in the fall and to see the grapevines beginning as opposed to seeing them heavy with fruit. So it's the same thing, but it's different. And I think I'm never disappointed if I see something that is exactly the same because it feels stable. If I see something drastically changed, sometimes I'm not afraid of it, but I do question why it changed. If I see something new, really new, it will change me. If I see something that's really old, it makes me feel stable. And so when I travel, whether it's a local trip at home or overseas, I think I'd make the same judgments in my head. I don't always look for something better. I might look for something different. We were looking for a place here, I think about 12 years ago. The first place we stopped we thought was an agriturismo. It was private and we were being yelled at <laughs> to, to get out. And then we looked along the way from here from Montalcino and we saw on this dirt road there were three signs that said agriturismo. The first one was closed, the second one there was a scary dog and no people. And then we came to this one and they had no signs. And because we already went on someone's private property, Brad was gonna go down the driveway and I insisted, I said, no, don't do it. I said, this is, it's, this is too grand to be <laughs> the agriturismo. And he, he went forward and that's why we are here today. If Brad didn't go down the driveway, we would have lost this place. So I think it's just fate that we happen to be here. The party drives a short distance to Pianza, a small town that dates back to the 9th century. Stone and brick, a cathedral and a palace, cheese, meats and laundry. In the medieval town of Montichiello, the party has an off-menu meal at La Porta. Needles, beef cheeks, risotto with white truffle, rabbit and wine. I'm just happy to be on the trip in the first place. And going to these small villages and small towns, I don't know all the small dishes. I don't even know what they're called. But the way they're prepared seems to be something special. And if it's special to them, it has to be special to me.
Under the Cover of Night, the party trees off to sleep in this new wilderness. The expanse of the, the landscape is, it's hard to believe that something uh, over 180 degrees isn't cut up by a factory or something, or an aluminum siding home, or a vinyl siding home. It's, this structure here is all stone, and towel, it's, it's, it's long lasting. You know, it's funny, we do create pictures in our minds of what a place is all about, and this place has, I have, a, I have this picture, beautiful. In one sense, you, it's without all the stimulation of the city. I mean, it is totally. We are out in the we are in the boonies. We are seven kilometers probably from Matocino in the woods that most people couldn't find. So, and we are at the end of the line. The road doesn't go any further, and so we are in the Italian countryside in an area which is really contradictory because it looks like nobody's ever been here before. The hills and the mountains and the grapes and the grapevines. But you know that in order to create the, the, the Barolos and the wines that they created, created there's some very sophisticated procedures and analysis in order to... So here we are, not in the middle of absolutely nowhere, and you know that they've, there's been a lot of education and research to do what they do here. 330,000 cases of deep, rich Brunello wine are produced in Montalcino annually. Brunello di Montalcino is a red wine made from 100% Sangiovese grapes. Dating back to the 14th century, Brunellos gained popularity in the mid-1800s when they were prized for being the best wines in Tuscany. It is among the vineyards of Montalcino that our party retreats. It is a retreat. It's a retreat from politics. It's a, a, re, a retreat from religion or anything that happens in society. It is a retreat. And sometimes we need retreats like that. We need to get away and find ourselves so that we can go home refreshed and renewed, so to speak. I like doing nothing. I like thinking. I like reading a little bit. I like talking to people I don't know. That I enjoy. I travel because I like to rub elbows with people who are A, different than me, and that I can learn something about me through them, even if it's like an unconscious bias. It helps me catch myself. And it's, it's kind of interesting to see divergent views and still people interact in a very social manner and, you know, divergent views, but still be able to come around common goals like making pizza. If you're with your family, you, you know the traits, you know what's going to happen. You know who's going to be tired at what time, who's going to be happy, who's going to complain. With other people, uh, most people are pretty calm the first couple of days, and after a few days, it starts to come out the true traits of their personalities. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay, that's fine. And you, and you always learn something from everybody. And maybe if you weren't totally enamored with someone at the beginning, by the end of the trip, you, you learn to like them. You learn to understand their personality. Even though you may have had some bad situations, like in your home life or your personal life, sometimes you meet people who have had it worse than you and it makes you appreciate the good things that you have. Or if I meet somebody that I really admire, it helps me set my standards higher. Maya Angelou once said, perhaps travel cannot prevent bigotry, but by demonstrating that all peoples cry, love, eat, worry, and die, it can introduce the idea that if we try to understand each other, we may even become friends. In Italy, less is more. You know what I mean? You don't want to put a ton of weight on here. Actually, I make my own This is the part part part. So when I need it. And of right course, here. this is the olive oil from this farm. Oh, neat. Which is, has a huge flavor. Wonderful. 
Can you do this? Okay. Excuse me. Put it where you like it. This one's going to have a little charcoal on it. Sometimes when I buy an object, for example, if I buy a picture or a, a painting or something like that and bring it home, then that reminds me of where I was. That's my, that's my thing that I did yesterday or last month or a year ago. That reminds me of the good time that I had at the villa. I bought a painting in um, Florence that reminded me of the villa that we stayed, my family and I, where we stayed several years ago in a place near here called Villa de Bombi. And uh, while it wasn't exactly the same, it was like that. And I didn't have anything like that in my home. That's why I bought that. It wasn't a spur of the moment kind of thing. And it also reminds me of this place, the Tuscan hills, the trees, the topography, everything. One of the really wonderful things about learning to cook for me was that it gave me the confidence just to cook without, I like cookbooks, just to look at them, to get an idea, see something, oh, and they're doing something with oranges and something else. Okay, I won't even read the recipe as much as I will take just something that gave me a, it touched my palate in some way, you know? Made my mouth water thinking about it and then I would go with it. And so technique lets you know what ingredients like and what they don't like. You know, I always use the example of tomatoes. Tomatoes don't like to be cooked all day long. They just don't. They become acid. I feel like I will be a student of food for the rest of my life. And even at work, I go through like this ebb, I know all chefs do. You go through this ebb and flow of I'm excited about food and I'm learning something new and now it's work, 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 work and then I'm going to learn something new and so it's kind of a roller coaster ride of you're excited, it's a job, you're excited, it's a job kind of thing. Before I started learning to cook, I liked food a lot. But I didn't love all everything about it. As I said, I'm very ADHD, so I am I have very limited patience. That's why I cannot do pastry. Tom can do something 400 times. I can do it twice and then I have to leave and do something else and come back and maybe do two, two more, but I can't do any more than that. And I, that's sort of my life um, in general. I have very little concentration abilities. But food, because every task is different in cooking, I can really relax and cook for a long time. My entire life of working in the food service industry, making pastries eight hours a day plus, I would come home and make dinner, open a beer or a glass of wine. It's a whole different experience when you're cooking at home and you're relaxed. So people say, how can you work all day and then come home and cook? Because I really enjoy it.
being just a pastry chef mainly, um, that was my main concentration when I first started out of college. But now I'm open to everything in the kitchen. And I think working with Brad for the last uh, 18 years, he has opened the horizon of what I can do. So, and he also helps me a lot with my pastry. For example, when I'm decorating something with colors or f the texture, or he has, a, he has a, an art background, so he has a different eye than I do, and he'll tell me to tweak something just a little bit, and, and now I use it all the time. Twice a year in Siena, the horses and their riders, dressed in the color of the city words, flood the Piazza del Campo to race in the Palio of the Siena. Despite the very short race times, often lasting mere minutes, riders are frequently thrown into the dusty chaos, as their horses attempt to manage tight turns and the passion of their rivals. The winning horse does not need to retain his rider. Today, the piazza is tranquil, calm, there is no race today, just the faint sounds of relaxing, talking, eating and drinking. At Lusteria in Siena, the chef prepares a bruschetta topped with sheep's cheese, sliced pear, and drizzled honey. Back to the villa, Tom and Brad are making dinner. Bruschetta, salad, lard on fried dough, stuffed zucchini flowers, soffritto and pasta. In an interview with Daniel Charles, composer John Cage relayed an art code about the artist Mark Tabby. One day we were taking a walk together, from the Cornish school to the Japanese restaurant where we are going to dine together, which meant we crossed through most of the city. Well, we couldn't really walk, it will continually stop to notice something surprising everywhere on the side of a shack or in an open space. That walk was a revelation for me, 
It was the first time someone else had given me a lesson in looking without prejudice. Someone who didn't compare what he was seeing with something before, who was sensitive to the finest nonsense of light. Toby will stop on the sidewalks, sidewalks which we normally didn't notice when we were walking, and his gaze will immediately turn them into a work of art. I'm really trying to see what people have built. That's what I want to see. Nature is lovely, vistas are wonderful, but I want to see what people have made and what people have created and what they've built. And I like it when there's a culture that is different enough from mine that it's very attention getting, but relates enough to me and to my culture that I can have some understanding of what it is. The party returns to familiar ground, Florence, Firenze. On the final night of the trip, the party walks to one last restaurant for a special meal. There is something funny about travel. There's spice, there's diversion, there's you wouldn't believe the outfit that these people think is reasonable kind of stuff. So that there's always an element of entertainment. But there's another thing I think about these trips that I think is really important. And I think everybody does it to some degree or another. I think that there's a constant search for those historical threads that make sense to you, that allow you to say to yourself, well, this group and that group, this conflict and that conflict, this evolution and that invention, to put yourself and the species in some context in time and in, in thought. I think a lot of the reminiscing is a reflection of that, this incredible period of, of achievement should be very reassuring to people and it should encourage them to look for those threads and pull them together and see where they fit in history and in their own lives and in the lives of others. What do we look for when we travel? We travel for pleasure, for experience, for learning, and for escape. We claim experiences for ourselves, pride ourselves on unearthing the hidden, noticing the ignored. Sometimes we are humble, sometimes not. We seek comfort, while at other times we run adverse into challenges into the unknown. In the morning, surrounded by the fog of the mountains, our party returns home 